this section of chapter three is all about equations and uh, writing equations, balancing equations, learning about equations. So what is an equation? Okay, a chemical equation is where you have a reactant that gives you products. We indicate that by an arrow. An arrow stands for yield, reactants, yield, products. Reactants are not equal to products. If reactants are equal to product, it means your reaction did not work. You only have reactants in there. Okay, so back to the board, okay, back to the lab and then starting the reaction again. So reactants give you products. Now remember one of the things that happens in any reaction according to Dalton's atomic theory is that matter is conserved. Okay, so which means that um, there is no creation or loss of matter okay, during the reaction. So that law of conservation of mass means that when you write an equation, all the atoms on the left hand side have to be equal to the atoms on the right hand side. Okay, And that's another thing that Dalton's atomic theory stated is that in a chemical reactions, the atoms are rearranged. Okay, Nothing is lost, nothing is gained, Okay, which is the law of conservation of mass. So all you do is rearrangement of the atoms. So luckily for us, this equation that we have right now, we can clearly see all the atoms right there. So we have the carbon, we have the oxygen, and then here also we have the one carbon and then the two oxygens, right? So everything is there, nothing is lost, okay? That's how this is working out. So that's a good thing. That's how it's supposed to be. All right, let's talk a little bit about the different kinds of reactions that we have in chemistry. So the one that we just did with carbon and oxygen is considered to be a synthesis, which is a combination reaction, which means you combine two things to give you one. Could be three things to give you one, could be that too. But anyhow, so you take two things and you combine them and that gives you one. So it's called a combination reaction. You can call it synthesis or combination. Both are gonna work. Double displacement is when you have two elements displacing other two elements. Okay, so here you can see you have silver nitrate and sodium chloride on the reactant side, and on the product side, you have silver chloride. So silver displaced sodium to be with chlorine, and then sodium combined with nitrate, right, to give sodium nitrate. So that's considered to be a double displacement reaction. Then there is a single displacement reaction in which only one chemical is displacing the other. So zinc here is displacing copper to give zinc sulfate and then copper poor thing is by itself, okay? And then finally there is a decomposition reaction in which one compound is going to give you two. So it decomposes, okay? So this is kind of the opposite of synthesis. In combination reaction, you're combining two things. In decomposition, you're actually decomposing something, the opposite of that. So these are the four types of reactions, and you do have to classify these reactions for me when I give you some examples. Um, now, just one more little thing uh, before I move on from here, and that is these little symbols that I have here for you. And these symbols actually stand for the states, okay, that we have the matter in. So whether it's gas, liquid, solid, or dissolved in water, which is AQ. So G for gas, L for liquid, you know, these things are pretty easy to understand. AQ means aqueous. And aqueous means that it is something that is dissolved in water. So when something is dissolved in water, it's a little bit of a different state. It's not a liquid state, okay? It's something different. So we have a whole chapter ahead of us uh, in which we are going to talk about reactions that happen in water, all right? So it's a different kind of a thing. So we have to write it as AQ, and that's what's here, okay? Don't mix um, those kind of things. So now let's talk about balancing of chemical equations. So balancing equation means that you're making sure that the atoms on the left-hand side equal to the atoms on the right-hand side okay, of the equation, conservation of matter. So here I have an equation, again, carbon and oxygen, but this time I have going to carbon monoxide instead of carbon dioxide. Okay. So I want to explain something here to you. When we wrote the first equation out, which was the carbon dioxide, everything was one and one, right? So here it is this equation. So carbon, you know, one carbon, one carbon, two oxygen, two oxygen, everything is accounted for, all right? So what I didn't explain then, because now we're going to talk about this, is this thing called coefficient. 
coefficient is the number that goes here. If there is no number there, it means that it is one. Okay, so when we start balancing equation number one, we do not change the formula. If you change the formula, you're changing the chemical equation. So you cannot do that. The only thing you can change is the coefficient. OK, so in front of the chemical, you can put whatever number you want, 28, 30, 100, whatever it is, OK, to balance the equation. But you cannot change the formula. Keep that in mind. OK, that's an important thing. So now let's look at this equation that we have to balance in which we have um, carbon plus oxygen to give us carbon monoxide. So the way we balance this equation here, actually the final answer is given to you. So I wanna take you step by step. So here, because you have oxygen, oxygen is two. Okay, now another thing you want to remember as we go through all of these things is that you have to write these uh, compounds in their elemental state. Okay, which means oxygen in their elemental state is actually O2 and not O. That is how it exists on this earth. Carbon you can find as carbon, but oxygen you cannot find as O, so you have to write it as the diatomic uh, gas, okay, O2. So we've had this discussion before, okay, like when to write what. So now you're going to start writing O2, N2, H2, and all of that, okay, with the diatomic gases. So O2 you cannot change, all right, O2 is O2 because that's oxygen. What you can change is on the right-hand side is you can put 2 on this side to balance the oxygen. OK, but once you balance the oxygen, you now create an imbalance with carbon. So now you have to put a coefficient in front of carbon. OK, so 2C plus O2 to give 2CO and now everything is balanced out. OK, so these numbers, these are called coefficients Okay, that I've given to you here. So 2, 1 and then 2, those are the coefficients that we need in order to balance this equation. Now, I've asked you before to think about um, compounds and mole ratios, right? So when we were dealing with carbon monoxide, I said to you, think of this as one mole carbon and one mole oxygen, okay? Now I'm gonna ask you to relate this to the equation, okay? And in an equation, you will say that this is two moles carbon reacting with one mole oxygen to give two moles of carbon monoxide okay and if you read the equation that way again life is going to be a little bit easier for you at least in chemistry okay so these balancing of an equation is a big thing because if you don't balance an equation then you don't have the law of conservation of mass right you're not following that law so you really have to make sure that the equation is balanced and then think in terms of moles that's going to help you okay so again, this is a simple balancing of equation. I've just gone through the same rules again with you, write in the proper elements, make sure that you're writing in diatomics, balance one thing at a time, and then you balance the other, right? So here, if you're making sodium chloride using sodium and chlorine, so sodium and chlorine gives you sodium chloride, and then sodium plus chlorine. Now you're balancing out the chlorine by putting the two over here in front as a coefficient and then now that you have 2Na the Cl is balanced but to balance the Na now you have to balance uh, you have to put a coefficient in front of Na okay so that gives you a balanced equation all right so take it step by step and you'll see you'll get it okay one atom at a time um, and here I mentioned to you that at this point we may not be writing the solid liquid gas so much because we don't need it right now and I don't want to waste time with that. Okay, so when it's necessary we will use it and if you see me use it, it's okay. Uh, if you don't use it, I'm okay with that too. All right, so I'm going to give you word equations that you will have to write in a symbol format, okay? Sometimes I give you just the equation, no problem. Balance this equation, you can balance it out. In some cases, I give you a word equation, and then you have to write the symbols also for me, okay? So make sure you follow these rules in order to write those kind of equations. So for example, metals are always monoatomic, okay? So as potassium is K, it's not K2, it's not 2K. 
2k will come only if you are balancing the equation, okay, when it's needed. But otherwise, you're not even going to put 2k or k2 or anything like that. It's monoatomic, okay? And then, of course, the diatomics, we've talked about this. So you have seven diatomic gases that we've talked about or elements, and those will be then written as O2, H2, CO2, F2, whatever it is, okay? All the compounds make sure that they have their proper mole ratios, all right? So calcium chloride is CaCl2. It's not CaCl. If you write CaCl, you will never be able to balance the equation, okay? So and even if you do, it's going to be wrong because you're not following the law of conservation of matter, okay? So you make sure that your formulas are written properly, okay, in there. Read the problem to figure out what the product is and what the reactant is. And usually when you read it slowly, you should be able to tell, okay, these are my reactants and these are my products. Okay, so again, be careful. And again, just to mention again, the only time your equation is not going to be balanced is if some formula is not correct. Okay, otherwise you should be able to balance all equations. So here we'll start with a simple one. Write an equation for magnesium reacting with nitrogen to give magnesium nitride. So first of all, write the symbols of everything. Okay, I mean, this is like the simplest thing you can do for any equation. So magnesium is Mg, reacting with nitrogen is N2, magnesium nitride is Mg3N2. So you should be able to write all of these formulas without any issues and now for writing the equation itself what is the reactant and what is the product is read the equation magnesium reacting with nitrogen to give magnesium nitride to give magnesium nitride meaning that's the product right so you then write the equation out and there it is write the formulas underneath it to give you an idea of what it is i mean if you don't want to write the this equation the word one you don't have to just write the formulas so mg plus n2 gives us mg3 n2 and now to balance the equation i think in this one it's simple enough you just need to balance the magnesium because nitrogen is already balanced so you just need to change the coefficient um, of magnesium, okay, in there, and that balances the equation out. That should be it. Um, here is another one, a little bit longer, I think. Let's see. Write the equation for formation of calcium phosphate. Formation of calcium phosphate. Formation meaning that's the product from, then these are the reactants, calcium oxide and tetraphosphorus deca oxide. Oh my lordy, okay. All right, so let's go ahead and write all the formulas out. Calcium phosphate is this. You have to know your nomenclature, okay? I can't help you in there. You have to know your polyatomic ions. You have to know, know the nomenclature. Calcium oxide is CaO, and then tetraphosphorus deca oxide is this, okay? So now, you have to write what the reactants are and what the products are. So remember formation of calcium phosphate. So you're forming calcium phosphate. So that's on the right hand side of the equation and calcium oxide. And then you have P4O10. Now, generally, I would say when you read an equation, you try to say their names. That will really help you with the nomenclature. Okay, so don't say CaO. Okay, say calcium oxide. That will help you. Okay. All right, so now we have to start balancing the equation now that we have our equation written out, okay? So here, both of these compounds are in compound form. There is nothing by itself because usually if you have something by itself, like magnesium uh, or sodium, you leave it to the end, okay, to balance because, you know, it's, it's by itself. So you don't have to put any coefficient until the very end but here everything is in combination okay so where do we start so here we are going to start with phosphorus because that is the polyatomic ion so here we have four here we have two don't forget there is a two out here so which means you have two phosphorus it doesn't matter okay in which combination it is so long you have the two atoms of phosphorus that is really what matters okay so since you have two here and four here you need to put two in front of the calcium phosphate now once you've added two in front of the calcium phosphate now you need to change the calcium oxide now oxygen is in both okay you have oxygen in both so we're going to wait until the end for the oxygen okay so here then you have two in front of calcium phosphate so which means two times three 
you have six of calcium. So you're gonna go ahead and put six as a coefficient for calcium oxide. Now all you have to do is go ahead and count your oxygens and make sure everything is balanced. If it does not, then we're gonna to have to do something else because at this point we have balanced our calcium and we've balanced the phosphorus, okay? So the only thing that's remaining is oxygen. So here oxygen, I've counted it for you. So you have six from um, the uh, calcium oxide and 10 from the tetraphosphorus deca oxide, that's 16, and then PO402, and so that eight, eight, four times two is eight, and then multiplied by two, which was the coefficient in front, that gives you a total of 16. So which means oxygen is balanced out. So as I said, you know, it may look complicated, but it really is not because once your atoms, uh, once your formula is correct, everything should balance out. Okay, so here uh, the P4O10 or the tetraphosphorus decoxide did not need any coefficient, okay, for balancing the equation. Okay, so here is another one where you have CS2O2 to give CO2 and SO2. So now we're just going to go step by step. I don't even know why I have this. I usually put everything right there in the front. So, okay, let's do this. So tally the numbers. So here's what you can do if you have an equation given to you. I mean, we did this before. Every equation is just slightly different, you know. So, I mean, there is a systematic way of doing some, some things. This one, I kind of just take it as it comes kind of a thing, you know. So uh, here you have CS2 and O2. So you just kind of, take, you know, keep a track of all your atoms. Like in this case, um, I would uh, balance oxygen the last because uh, oxygen is by itself, okay? So if I change anything in oxygen, I will have to change these two compounds, okay? So better it is that I balance these two first and then I balance the oxygen at the end, okay? That's what my thinking is when I balance out um, equations, okay, on my own. So here then, what are we going to do? We have CS2, so first we're gonna go ahead and balance the sulfur, so put two in front of sulfur, that takes care of sulfur, and carbon, we still have one and one on either side, and then oxygen now is two on the left side and on the right hand side we have six. Okay, so two from here and then two and then two, right? So two times two is four, four plus two is six on the right hand side. So now all we have to do is put three in front of that oxygen <coughs> and that gives us um, the six uh, oxygens on both sides. Okay, so uh, again, that's the one rule that I definitely follow is that whatever element is by itself, you leave it until the end. Okay, so balance everything else first and whatever element there is by itself, you leave it to the end to balance out. Okay, so here is the whole balanced equation. Here is another one. You can read it all through. Again, this is just tallying, you know, atoms one by one. So here again, oxygen is by itself. So you balance it at the end. Okay, all right. So I think that's all we have here. Not really a whole lot of thing going on. So happy equation writing.